Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. We now move to a first of its kind session, a Jugal Bandi. It's a Jugal Bandi on the topic, Tech Trails in Insurance, Navigating Growth and Disruption Landscapes. For this session, we would like to invite Mr. Abhay Tiwari and Mr. Danish Dilkush on stage. And can we please have the podium with the mic? Mr. Abhay Tiwari is a fellow member of the, IA, of, of the IAI and the IFOA UK. He took over as managing director and CEO of Star Union Daichi Life Insurance in 2021, before which he was the joint president, corporate, and chief actuary. Mr. Tiwari has more than 25 years of experience in financial services with dominant part being spent in the life insurance industry. Welcome, sir. Mr. Danish Dilkush leads the customer success team at Microsoft India and South Asia. He has over 25 years of IT experience, Cisco Systems and Wipro Infotech. He is passionate about blending technology solutions with business use cases and has been a part of some of the largest flagship cloud adaptations across various enterprises. The floor is yours. So can we have the slide deck, please? You guys can hear me okay? All right, We're waiting for the slide, but you know, good call out. Uh, I th actually, Mr. Abhay, do you want to kind of kick it off and then? Yeah, I, I, maybe I just, uh, the mic. Brief, uh... okay. Is it work? Yeah. Yeah, yeah thank you uh, for this session. I think it is, very differently thought through. I mean, I think we have been thinking about, you know, and we discuss a lot about data and analytics, but the technology which powers the capability of doing that analytics and, you know, power of, you know, cap the data is getting captured every time. So one is the capturing of the data and then making sense out of that data. The tech behind that is also evolving at a super normal speed. And I think, you know, uh, if you see, we have, uh, seen uh, the whole evolution of cloud technologies, the edge technology, and now the artificial intelligence, helping in many ways, you know, businesses evolve and change the way we have been doing things. You know, I, I think even when we talk here, I think a lot of things are happening which are disrupting everything. Now, it is making smart people smarter, but also helping people at the bottom of the pyramid come up the curve and do things which was never imagined. Now, I think what this particular session is about, you know, having a interaction between how tech and businesses can integrate and help uh, each other. Because see, tech on its own or in isolation is not meaningful. Similarly, business without tech cannot survive. So we thought that let us have a discussion uh, and what better way to get a person like uh, Danesh who has been spearheading customer success unit at Microsoft is a, as an executive director there. He's been heading the India and the Asia Pacific unit. So, you know, uh, he has been working on helping people adopt the cloud technologies, but of late, I mean, he has helped many leaders, business and technology leaders who, to make this digital transformation. But, uh, you know, of late, he has been focusing a lot on making use cases of generative AI and co-pilot technologies. So I'll, you know, uh, give it to Danesh to give us a brief introduction as to how uh, the technology has evolved over the last, say, 15, 20 years and how insurance stands to gain out of it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Mr. Abhay. And really, first of all, a big thank you to the Institute of Actuaries to invite me and to kind of hear out our next 10 minutes of, 10 to 15 minutes of session that we have. And when we're actually preparing for this, we were thinking, hey, there are two ways of actually sharing our thoughts, right? One, have a conversation. The other is to co-present. And as rightly Mr. Abhay said, it's, it's the jugalbandi of business and tech to come together. You know, if you go back several decades, having access to railways or electricity would have been a competitive edge for businesses. Today, it's the must do. It's, it's basics, it's first principles. Technology also is first principles, right? And I think if you look back to how technology has evolved, there have been several platform shifts over the past several decades. We started in some form or shape with PCs and server, which is the client-server computing era. Then we moved uh, predominantly to web and internet. 
Then we have cloud uh, and obviously mobile, which is what we spoke about, analytics at scale. And I think we are coming to a very different kind of platform shift, which is AI. And I think there was an interesting question in the audience in the previous session, hey, how do you really look at AI? I think to a large extent, for several, several years, we as humans have tried to figure out how to work with computers. I think this is an era where computers are going to speak to us. But technology is going to figure out how using natural language models, how can they talk and interact like humans? And that's exactly where, I think in the previous conversation also, technology, not for the sake of it, but to bring outcome to business is what really the focus is. I'll try and use this. Yeah. The first thing we thought about is, why don't we speak about the imperatives? I'm sure everybody out here knows what the industry challenge and the opportunity is, what customers are asking for. And again, I would like Mr. Abhay to also jump in for each of these points. But the first thing that we thought about is customer engagement. Irrespective of which channel the customer would like to go to interact with a company or a distributor, it has to be consistent. You can't go to an online channel and have a conversation, and then when you go offline trying to speak with humans, there is a break in that communication or the information, which means the experience has to be 360. And if that experience has to be 360, also the workforce in the back has to transform so that they know how to interact with these channels and the data available out there. The next most important imperative is competitive pressures, right? Because obviously use of technology and use of various methods of reaching out to customers and services them, these will evolve and have evolved a lot. But if you look at how do you bend that curve of innovation, innovation as an imperative, it's critical for businesses to say, how can I go ahead and accelerate that particular go-to-market using technology and the right use case? We heard about in the, in, in the morning as well in a session, I want something to sell to customers what they need and not what I want to sell. And that's an important imperative for us to focus on. But last but not the least, security, compliance, has to be at the core of the machinery of execution. We can't neglect that last important point because risk is one that everybody is exposed to and you have to figure out how to mitigate that. I'll pause here. Mr. Abba, your thoughts? Yeah, I think uh, uh, very well put, Danesh. Uh, see, the, the whole uh, uh, technology stack, if you see in India, I mean, we are one of the, we have the best financial technology stack. I mean, the health stack is yet to come up to that level, but on the financial stack, we have, I think, one of the best uh, data available on, on people and I think the customers are also expecting that kind of a response that using that, how do you give it, how do you cater to me in a jiffy? I mean, you just res give me a response immediately. So whether it is an onboarding experience, whether it is a service experience, as Danesh mentioned, that if I have called you once, you should know that I have called you already and I you cannot expect a second, you know, uh, feedback again or I cannot, don't want to repeat myself. Similarly, on uh, the information, if I have done a medical examination, perhaps if you have a method, if I am giving my consent, you should have access to my data and you can take a decision, give it to me very quickly. So I, I think, you know, the, the speed at which customer is expecting a, a, you know, a response or a, a service, I think that is also dramatically changed. I mean, if you see earlier, you know, the, the computing power which has got enhanced because of the cloud technologies, the edge computing, I think it is many, many fold. I mean, if you see Wikipedia, perhaps it has about 20% of the you know words and content uh, there whichever is exist in the world maybe they will be uh, they will be having with them but with the ai tools i think you know we have already reaching 70 80% of the content already being the ai you know bots are being trained on the on that so at some stage you'll have entire words spoken ever to be you know uh, to uh, to have been given to this ai bot and they would have been trained on that so it is it is becoming an, but with that access people are now expecting everywhere a very different experience and i think that's where we are coming that you know as an actuary or as an insurance industry we have a lot of imperatives of this evolving technology we have to adopt it we have to look at it we cannot just shy away from it we cannot ignore it anymore i think uh, you know people sitting here in this room we have been a good user user of technologies and i think uh, we have been trying to integrate uh, we, you know, in the program, in the curriculum also now, when we put that R programming as a compulsory thing, the idea was that let people have the programming experience because we can't develop new tools and things and which the customers are expecting until we really bring them into the curriculum. But 
I think the world is moving really fast and with this AI thing, I think whatever we learned over 10, 15 years, maybe we'll have to cover in three to four years. And that's where I think this, this uh, rapid transformation is something which is, which is, you know, where we have to be really uh, approach the whole thing in a very different manner. Perfect. Thanks, Mr. Abhay. And I, I like, like the focus around we need to move fast, but make sure we are very focused on the outcomes. So if you look at the outcomes, the use cases, I think if I have to sort of build a triangulation across saying engage with customers consistently with an experience across channels, you can't do that unless you have information and data and signals. It's like saying when customers are engaging on your channels, do you have the telemetry of that particular engagement? The data exists. I think in fact the previous session also the conversation was around analytics. How do you make this analytics real time? So that I don't have to wait for a day to understand what my customer did yesterday or 24 hours back. So that triangulation has to come with artificial intelligence to augment that particular intelligence that exists today and bring those signals to your employees and to your customers in the broader ecosystem where it matters, when it matters. Customer service modernization is the crucial element out here. Because ultimately, when you sell, you have to service so that that particular life cycle experience is what customers really cherish. And I think bringing that triangulation together, saying, okay, now when I'm thinking about technology, how can it help? The best part is technology is already pervasive. I don't think there's any insurance company out here or any partner in that insurance company who's not using technology. And hence, you already have that data. You already have those signals. You have to figure out a way to surface that to the personas that really matter. And I think that's the triangulation that we are talking about. Again, Mr. Abhay, any quick thoughts on that? No, I think, uh, uh, I think he has very, very well put it that it is an augmented intelligence. I mean, it's not about artificial intelligence. Uh, when we say, then we you know, try to look at it from a distance. But it is augmenting our work, augmenting our understanding or our usage of data and the, you know, the tools which we already have. So I think that's where this technology can become a real game changer. And we have to come out of that fear. I think Yuval Noah Harari, I think I, you know, one of my favorite, he, a philosopher who really, you know, talks a little on, uh, on the, uh, the effects, the ill effects which perhaps uh, AI can have if it is not well regulated. I agree you know, on that part that the regulation definitely needs to be very strong in this area, but you know, we have still, you know, we are far away from that particular stage and whether, you know, whether, you know he talks about consciousness and all that which can uh, you know, come with AI, but I feel we are really far away from there and we have to first harness the power. The ill effects can be, the, the unexpected or unwanted effects can be mitigated is what I feel. I mean, I'm not a very big uh, expert on a technology, but I feel that the unwanted things can still be contained, provided we first harness it properly and harness it well. So, you know, uh, I think we are, we are you know, uh, in that uh, dilemma of whether to take it or not take it, we'll, we'll miss the whole thing and perhaps, uh, you know, things may go wrong even in that situation. I mean, when we miss it or we don't use it properly, things can even go wrong in a much bigger way, actually. So what I'm saying is that, understanding it properly and thoroughly and by sitting in a very elite crowd here people like us here need to really adopt it understand it uh, really well actually i mean it's not only just understanding from from a distance but using it mastering it actually is required and then, then only we can talk about the ill effects or the side effects of that so. fantastic so it's responsible ai is what we're really looking at right so that's, with that cue, in fact, when you're looking at the evolution, so again, when I and Mr. Abhay were speaking about it yesterday, okay, so let's think about multiple horizons, right? When we're looking at the transformation of technology in the insurance industry, I think the first phase, which most of us are already in, is harness the power of the scale that cloud can provide. Whether it's about the core insurance, whether it's your mission critical applications that service your channels, how do you take that particular power and make sure you're able to kind of churn that data at a much faster rate? The next thing is to embrace the digital transformation. Again, with most of us already are on that particular path. But what that means is that if somebody wants to interact with your online presence, are you limited to a computer screen or is it mobile or is it just text messages or social media that particular proliferation of interaction has to be consistent across the board. And the digitization around it is about starting with digitizing the processes. 
And again, we spoke, uh, heard about that in the previous session. How do you really figure out health records that are available? So instead of just speaking to that particular customer, can you first get understanding and then go have a background and talk to that particular customer? But the most important phase that's coming in is this multi-dimensional, multi-domain access. And again, one of the use cases in AI is when you're looking at chatbots, for example, are chatbots able to interact with your customers across multiple dimensions? Which means, if you're interacting with a chatbot of an insurance online presence, is this just talking about insurance? Or is it even able to converse around health? And try to give, have a conversation around the customer wanting to seek, saying, how should I have a lifestyle that really helps me not just be more healthy, but also predict how I am planning to look at my evolution of various aspects of my household that I need to look after. And that's again what we heard about in the previous session as well. So I think there are multiple horizons. Each of us today as players and providers in the, indu in the insurance industry may be at various stages, but the path is already chalked out. Again, back to you, Mr. Abhay. Yeah, I think, uh, see, uh I mean, when I, I was also trying to understand ki the difference, which, you know, which, uh, say, when I, we just used to talk about AI many years back as well, but the generative AI, then what is it different now? I mean, and I keep on thinking that yeah, earlier, if you see, for example, if you uh, ask the AI bot to say, read your mails, maybe it will read it out to you. It will say you have received a mail from this person or that person, but now it can respond. You know, it can create a very good response for that email. It, it can s filter out which are the important emails which you should concentrate. Now, these, these are, you know, very important developments because, and earlier it was not possible perhaps because of the lack of that computing power. But now that we have that technologies which can really compute, uh, you know, maybe many, you know, uh, billions or, you know, trillions of now, you know, data points or parameters are being built in that neural networks. So if that is possible now, and that's why we are getting these outcomes, then why not use it and why not use it to uplift and make the lives better for everybody around? Absolutely, absolutely. So moving on, I think you spoke about, you know, uplifting the bottom of the pyramid. So is it about just getting the smart to get smarter? Is all about uplifting the entire, I would say, population scale that we have today? And I would like to, in fact, showcase a specific uh, case study out here. Let's see if this plays well. Let's try it, yeah. I'm not sure the audio is on. And Marathi is actually a language that is spoken by millions and millions of people. But unfortunately, many Indian languages are under-resourced. We cannot let language be the thing that does not allow you to use technology. AI is a transformative technology. People deserve to have access to these amazing technologies in their language. Kara exists to accelerate social mobility in rural India by building AI-based solutions to help our communities. Our workers record sentences in their mother tongue on their smartphones. And for the simple task, we pay them nearly 20 times the Indian minimum wage. And that leads to a data set, so they keep on making royalties every single time those data sets are resold. I think it is imperative that if we are changing someone's income structure in this way, that we also need to help them understand financial literacy. आजकला मुलांच्या नावावर एफ डी कशा करायच्या हे खूप खूप शिकलो आम्हाला आता कुणाची गरज नाही की ए टी एम मध्ये जायचंय आणि पैसे त्यांनी काढून आणून द्यावेत असं नाही आम्ही स्वतः करू शकतो कार्यास प्लॅटफॉर्म इज होस्टेड ऑन ऍजर वी यूज ऍजर कॉग्निटिव्ह सर्व्हिसेस फॉर आवर ओन ए आय बेस्ड व्हॅलिडेशन वर्क आय वी ऑल्सो युजिंग ऍजर ओपन ए आय मला खूप आनंद वाटतो मला खरंच गर्व वाटतो की माझा आवाज कुठेतरी कोणतरी ऐकणार आहे आणि माझ्या मी मराठीत बोलले त्याच्यामुळे कोणीतरी शिकणार आहे मला अभिमान वाटतो इफ यू कॅन सॉल्व इट फॉर इंडिया यू कॅन सॉल्व इट फॉर द वर्ल्ड सो आय थिंक इफ यू लुक ॲट सो थँक्स फॉर दॅट सो इफ यू कॅन ॲक्च्युली लुक ॲट वॉट ए आय इज ब्रिंगिंग ॲज द पॉसिबिलिटीज फॉर द बॉटम ऑफ द पिरमिड इज टू स्टार्ट विथ द लँग्वेज डिवाईड 
And how do you really bridge that? And the phenomenal set of use cases that potentially kind of come out of this one very important and foundational solve is going to sort of define the future. And if you're thinking about AI opportunity, again, four broad categories, I'm sure there are more, enrich the employee experience, right? So if you're going to hire uh, just freshers out of your college, how do you really enable them right from day one? Or is that sort of a learning curve? So how can you shorten that learning curve? Focus around reinventing customer engagement. We spoke about that, the 360 view of the customer. Reshape the business process. We can't digitize the front end for the customer and not digitize the back end, the core processes, which is not just central to your own organization, but also to your partners. And most importantly, collectively bend that particular innovation curve. So that's where AI really comes into play. Now, okay, so we spoke about, in fact, uh, in the video you heard about Azure Open AI. And I'm sure one year back, most of you, uh, or I would say all of you have interacted with ChatGPT. And that sort of has come in to become more purpose-built for businesses to bring in the focus around content generation. So if you're looking at having a chatbot and the customer trying to interact with the chatbot, is a chatbot just asking so many questions saying, oh, press, you know, type one for this question, type two for this question, or is it like a human interacting with the other human on the other side? I think that's where the content and generation really comes into play. Summarization. Uh, in fact, for actuaries out here in the room, there'll be tons and tons of data, whether it's numerical data, whether it's models that are there, whether it's actually documentation sitting out there. Can Azure OpenAI go and summarize that for you in real time? And the most important thing is making semantic search. So search for what you are looking at and potentially predict that is where the focus really comes from. Last but not the least, and again, I'm gonna hand it off to uh, uh, Mr. Abai as well, is the plethora of use cases where AI can bring a big difference, and again, responsible AI can make a big difference, is phenomenal. Whether it's a front end with a customer interaction, your internal back end processes, focusing about employees being more empowered, working with your partners, uplifting the broader bottom of the pyramid, and overall energizing the industry as a whole or the ecosystem with newer use cases in this era of digitization is what I will leave with you, you with. Mr. Abai, your thoughts. I think you know uh, you have you have mentioned and captured most of the you know the fantastic use cases which we can already put into. I think the potential is immense. I think we have to create use our creative imagination to kind of you know see that how and where it can be used further. I mean we have put some use cases here, but this is a very small list. Yeah. I mean the list can become huge actually if we keep on thinking and imagining and then coming out with the problem statement. I think there can be solutions which are already existing and we can deploy them. So uh, I, I would say that, you know, like say maybe I'll uh, uh, pause here because I'll, you know, will allow you to ask questions and more, you know, interactions from your side because I think we have an expert here and we will perhaps like to answer some of your questions. But uh, this is one game changing technology and, and let me tell you that generative AI is not like the other technologies. It is going to be real, real. Uh, 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 big beneficial thing for the entire sector. Insurance can take the big advantage of this and we all can, you know, contribute by being, uh, you know, that, that imagination has to come from each one of us here. And that creativity will really make this successful. The product per se cannot really make a huge difference until as we start thinking about it, how to creatively utilize it. And I think, uh, you know, the, there are, uh, as I said, you know, the huge uh, development already happened on transformers where these neural networks have become too powerful. So how, how can we use the, all of that? And how maybe, you know, I would uh, request, uh, you know, one question I'll pose first to him on, um, you, know, on you know, there are various technology things which Microsoft have been doing. I mean, you uh, see the MS Office products, I think actually are one of the best users of Excel in the whole world, I think, you know, so, so the MS Office and then now, you know, uh, the, the cloud computing, the edge computing, the Azure services now, the co-pilot technologies on the AI side. So how does he integrate all of these and how is he planning to integrate the new generative AI with the existing technologies and tools which are already available in the bucket of Microsoft? I think one is that and then maybe how does it enhance our productivity? In, in, I mean, not necessarily per se for insurance because if we learn about how it is helping enhance productivity in any sector, perhaps we'll be able to use our imagination to bring that into this sector as well. So I, I 
No, great question, Mr. Abhay. And in, I have been a personal fan of Excel, frankly. I'm sure most of you are today. But I would sort of start by saying, when you think about Gen AI, uh, especially in productivity tools, think about Copilot. And the word Copilot is, you lead the innovation, and there is someone with you, like your buddy, who is basically empowering you to accelerate that innovation. Start with email. You want to have a long email that you've got from your colleague. Now, you can wait to read that, or you can ask Copilot to go and summarize that for you. That does not mean you read, don't read the entire email, but you know quickly what action items you want to take. Excel spreadsheets. Most of us are using pivot tables. Now, how can I go and ask questions back to my spreadsheet, saying, you have data, give me the signals, what I want. PowerPoint presentations. I'm sure all of you have used PowerPoint presentations to prepare. I know it's time out, but all to, to prepare and sell. But how can you take the plethora of innovation around whether it's images, whether it's text, information coming from documents to say, I want to do a great presentation, prepare something for me, give me more ideas. So the ideation is where the co-pilot steps in. So in, in, in summary, I think the tools exist today. Co-pilot is what empowers you to create the magic out of the content you already have. And I think it's always there for you in real time to say whether you're in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, or any of the productivity tools in Microsoft Stack, whether it's documents, spreadsheets, presentations, we can bring that together to release that magic. So I'll pause out there. Yeah, I think uh, very well put. I actually tried uh, you know, one of these uh, applications on, micro, uh, on PowerPoint. And uh, the way he mentioned, I, I think we put a 30, 40 page document and requested it to summarize it to three page. So it prepared a very nice executive summary. And then you know, we asked that, now can you put it into PowerPoint? And then some of the, the slides were great, actually. So you have to just do some small edits and all here and there, and you are ready. So with the entire presentation in just like maybe five minutes. But if you have uh, written the whole document uh, yourself, you know exactly where to you know, pick, pick the things uh, and the errors and all that. But let me tell you, there were no errors, actually. So you know, uh, I was actually wanting to just summarize it and put it in a nice PowerPoint, the whole document. Uh, you know, uh, so it, it's a very interesting use case, but there are, you know, as I said, there are phenomenal use cases which we can think about here, but uh, I would leave it to your creative imagination, but uh, the power is immense and we have to just harness it. I think that's the, that's the message. Uh, I would, you know, like say, uh, request the audience to ask first a few questions, maybe then I'll close it maybe when, with one final question. So uh, if, if any of you feel like, you know, uh, asking anything which is very technical, please go ahead, don't worry. I mean, we'll, we'll perhaps get some answers. Uh, it, it may help you, may not. Pro yeah, yeah, please. I think you need a mic out there. Hello. Hi. Hi, sir. Thanks a lot uh, for a wonderful session and bringing the use cases in front of us. One question that is actually bothering me AI can help us giving a solution to a problem based on use cases or opinion or experience added into it. My question is, there can be difference of opinion. Your opinion, my opinion can be different and everything has gone into AI. So how can a end, end user, which is precisely uh, in the insurance sector, um, trust on the output? When opinion can be anything whether the output is the best suit to me, uh, how it can help in the in insurance industry. What is your opinion? No, first of all, great question. And I'm sure that question comes to any of you at any point of time. The reason I use the word co-pilot, in fact, you heard that from Microsoft reps many, many times, is the final decision is yours, right? Of what the right decision according to you it is. There's a buddy who's there to help you come up to that decision, to give you data and facts in real time for making that decision. It's not making the decision on your behalf. Ultimately, it's in your control, right? Similarly, when there is data, and I talked about responsible AI, it's about having the consent. You would need the consent for you to use that data to bring signals out of it. So I think it's about the element we spoke about, risk, compliance, security. You have to bring all of these aspects as a part of using the AI, or rather implementing the AI use cases, but the decision at the end of the day is still yours. Is the person who's helping you, AI is helping you arrive to that particular decision. Thank you. Sorry, I, I know we have time's up, so if any other last questions, or else waiting for your question, Mr. Abhay. Yeah, any, any other?
question please and then quickly then we can otherwise i'll uh, put one final question yeah i think uh, you know uh, i've been also thinking about this what is in it for the leaders i mean i think what sometimes we are not adept at technology we are not fully conversant with all this uh, the, and then integrating all these host uh, technologies you know internet of things cloud computing we get sometimes you know bogged down with too many terms floating around so we said that how the leaders can still make the best use of it how they can thrive in this era of disruption because you talk about a vuka world bani world and you say that you know the world is also changing dramatically and with technology it becomes even more you know galloping pace of change so how do we thrive in this era of disruption and how do we navigate ourselves to success i think you know not only the existing leaders but the emerging set of leaders sitting here all of you i mean i think uh, this question keeps on bothering that what is in it for me and how do i navigate this really well yeah no i think great question first and again uh, not here to preach i think the idea of how do you leverage technology in my perspective and way to unpack in the most simplistic form with i would say first principles is find a problem and find a problem that really matters frankly if you open up a slide deck there'll be thousands of problems that can come in but you have to have a prioritization framework saying what matters to my business whether it's risk whether it's obviously growth whether it's customer satisfaction what problems are there and then when you unpack that problem figure out how technology can help address that particular problem so technology is not there just for the sake of it but to address an outcome and i keep saying that to my team if you are a great tech person figure out how your skills can help drive an outcome or as compared to just being cool about the tech i think that's what my recommendation would be so think about outcome and think about problem i think the bridge is where technology comes into play back uh, to you abhi thank you so much thank you danish i think it was a wonderful thank session you. thank you so thank you so much thank you thank you so much we would like to thank you with a with a memento sir please stay on stage can i request mr kushwant pawar to kindly present the mementos